Hi everyone, this is Jackie from Bronx Bobbles, also known as Titi Gori. So recently, um, in the last two months, I went on several thrift store excursions. And in those thrift store excursions, I bought several pieces of jewelry. Pro, more than several, I bought a whole lot of jewelry. And so I wanted to share some of the reasons why I purchased these jewelries some backstory, some history, and give you some ideas of what I look for when I go out uh, for my costume jewelry excursions. And maybe you too can uh, start collecting some of these jewelry. Too. So I'm gonna start off with the designer branded jewelry. There are some hidden gems out there. So one of the first things I wanna show you is this Kenneth J. Lane Aztec really like a voodoo type of a guy on a chain. Now, I've seen these all over the internet and I've always wanted one of these. I actually spotted this guy from like 20 feet away. Did I see that crazy little voodoo guy and she knew exactly which one I was asking about. And when I said, pulled it out, I said, I bet you that's a Kenneth J. Lane or a KJL. Um, and sure enough, it was. Um, he did these um, Aztec, uh, uh, motifs in his costume jewelry. This is vintage, I'm guessing 80s, maybe 90s. But these are very, very popular. You see them everywhere. And um, there are copies of these guys. But make sure you get the Kenneth J. Ling. They come in a different variety of colors. So you might see him with a, a red head and maybe uh, black pants. Um, you see him, you know, you gotta make sure that you get them where these little sticks that they're holding is not broken off because look out for this guy. I was so excited to find him. I got one to go look for. Then I was excited to find this guy. This is a Trafari crystal uh, with um, a rope surrounding the crystal still that is um, prong set. The, these are um, two lovers, but I seen a Trafaris that are done in the zodiac sign. Uh, these don't run exorbitantly expensive. Trafari is a very highly collectible uh, name brand. There are Trafari brooches that are, and, and these elaborate, beautiful statement necklaces that you can get. Um, those run for top dollars. This this is not that expensive, but I did want a Trafari in my collection. And um, this one was nice because it was two lovers. So look out for these Trafari pieces, especially the Zodiac signs. Christian Dior. You would think that you couldn't find Christian Dior at the thrift store, but I found several pieces of Christian Dior. It is a Christian Dior necklace that was very, very popular in the 80s. It's not one of his big runway pieces, so it's not gonna command a ton of money. You wouldn't be able to sell a simple necklace like this that didn't have a name brand for more than like $20, $25, I don't think. Um, in the back is where you see the Christian Dior logo. And in addition, a week later, I found this brooch. This is a Christian Dior brooch. Again, I think it was 80s, no more than 90s. It's um, a very simple brooch. It's not one of his big elaborate ones. The, the more fancier, the more stones, the bigger that they are, the more money it will command. But this is a Christian Dior. As you can see in the back, it's marked. We have over $200 worth of designer jewelry. Don't dismiss these smaller pieces. Always check out the back um, because the back tells you more than the front, I always say. And then I'm going to my piece, the resistance. Now, if I went out shopping several times at the thrift store and only came back with this one piece, I would be in heaven. And that is this Yves Saint Laurent perfume necklace. Again, I spotted this 20 feet away and I knew exactly what it was. And the reason why I knew exactly what it was is because I have been eyeballing this necklace for years. When I tell you years, I couldn't imagine spending the money that it was asking for, but I wanted it. I wanted it really, really badly. Um, because I like perfume necklaces. I have several in my collection. And this one was like one of the top ones that I had been looking for, for a long, long time. This is what it looks like. This is Yves Saint Laurent 
opium necklace. See, it says Yise Laurent tassel made with from a lacquer box. And um, it has these two little uh, rondelles. And what you do is you open it and inside fits a small bottle of perfume. And I went on to the secondary market thinking that this was what I needed to complete the set because I have uh, this syndrome called complete set syndrome, which means that I have to complete the set. And so even though I had the beautiful necklace, I wanted the perfume bottle that goes inside. And so I got this off of eBay for just a few dollars. Unfortunately, it's not the right size. This is done in a cinnabar look plastic container. This Yves Saint Laurent is from the 70s. So this is a vintage uh, necklace. And opium perfume is my mother's favorite, favorite perfume. She loved this perfume. It's very, very strong, it's exotic, it's spicy, it smells delicious, and I can't wait to complete the set and wear it. Look out for this Yves Saint Laurent, and this one's gonna stay in my collection for sure because I, I almost screamed when I saw this. Now we're gonna go to some of the ethnic jewelry that I found. I'm gonna start off with this green cloisonne. This green cloisonne, I just fell in love with this color. It's one of my favorite, favorite colors. I like this color, I like that cinnabar color. And so this actually has a little bit of that, that cinnabar color. Um, it's so easy to wear this necklace. You can wear this with a nice t-shirt, with a pair of jeans. What? These are so easy to wear. Um, they were very, very popular in the 70s rope and um, they don't really command a lot of money. I just think visually they're beautiful. Here is another Asian design. I picked this because I love fish motifs and this is two fishes. Um, you can either call them koi, they could be goldfish on a quartz and it's cut out from, from a quartz. And it's really, really nice to wear. This is what it looks like on, okay? Fish is um, known for abundance. And so when you wear fish, uh, especially double fish like this, um, the idea is abundance. It's also for fertility. Women wear this to bring in a fruitful, happy, abundant life when it comes to money, when it comes to children. Um, and so that's what these fish motifs are. So when you look at jewelry, don't only just look at it for the aesthetic pleasingness of, of the beauty of it, but there's also a symbolic meaning to a lot of jewelry pieces. And sometimes people wear jewelry to symbolize certain things um, in their lives. And then I have this amazing, and I don't know who made this. I'm guessing it might be African inspired, but look at that. Is that gorgeous or what? Um, this kind of reminds me of those uh, African tribal women that wear these beautiful, gorgeous, gorgeous, um, neck pieces. Sometimes they're made of silk rope or thread like this is. Uh, other times they're made with uh, beads. Uh, beautiful intricate bead patterns and I have several in my collection. Um, I even have several bangles. Uh, but look at how stunning this is. And it's very very simple. And what I love more than anything about this is that it's, this is, you know, I, I do tend to wear, buy a lot of like crystals and Swarovskis and um, um, just flashy gold and silver. It's sometimes nice to see jewelry that's made with such humble things, but just has such a visual impact when you wear it. I can totally see this wear with what I'm wearing right now, actually. Um, I always think of things like how would they look against a white t-shirt? And this would pop, you know, on a white t-shirt um, or a blue jean shirt, um, a button-down shirt, something with a lot of uh, colors and you just put this in there for a little pop of color. It's just beautiful. This amethyst 
this is such a beautiful amethyst necklace. A lot of the times I've seen amethyst necklaces that have the small little chips of amethyst. This is like big, big pebbles. Now, amethyst comes from the Greek word that says not intoxicated. Um, and the Greeks would carve out these big chunks of stone of amethyst into these vessels, these cups. And they believe that if you drank wine from these vessels, um, it would prevent you from getting drunk. Well, of course it probably didn't work, but I'm sure that didn't stop them from continuing to do that. Uh, but amethyst is, is such an important stone uh, for those people who, who study the healing powers of stones. Um, I did um, a video and I showed my rose quartz jewelry and my, my rose quartz necklaces and rose quartz is to attract the love to your way. Well, amethyst is for peace and tranquility. You can pop one of these amethyst necklaces on and it's supposed to soothe and calm you and give you peace and tranquility. You can sleep with it at night so that you can rest more easily. Um, it's supposed to bring you inner tranquility and peace. And so I, when I saw this necklace, I knew a little bit about amethyst. And so I purchased it with the idea of giving it to my daughter so that she can experience some peace and tranquility in her life because uh, she's a student and she was very stressed out during the final season. If you see beautiful necklaces made with amethyst, grab them up and wear them for your, for your peace of mind. And I spotted these gorgeous, gorgeous earrings. These are Crystal Swarovskis in the shape of a heart. Now, I have to confess that I saw this at the counter for months and several times I picked them up and put them back picked them up and put them back and something kept making me gravitate towards them I can tell that they were well well made I can tell that they were quality earrings but I couldn't find a mark on them anywhere I opened them up I looked at the lever I looked in the front and the back all throughout and I did not find a logo and I said, you know what, for a couple of dollars, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and buy them because I, I know that they're quality. I know that they probably should be branded. And when I got home, I took another look and I didn't realize that the logo was actually right on that little stump. The logo is a swan. And as I told you in my previous uh, video, that the swan is the logo for Swarovski. So these are crystal rhinestone earrings in a heart motif clip back from the Swarovski collection of the 1980s. And so it's really important and I'm constantly learning. I learn every time I go out to purchase jewelry, I learn something new and there's so much to learn about jewelry and that's one of the reasons why I collect it. Um, in this case, I learned that first, my instinct that they were quality made jewelry was right on. And second, the logo can be in inconspicuous spots. And so next time I see a quality pair of earrings like that, I'll make sure to spot that logo probably a lot quicker. Um, and, the, and, and the other thing I wanted to also let you know is that you have to know the swan is for Swarovski. So you need to know it's quality made jewelry. You need to know the logo of specialty jewelry. And then you need to know where around the jewelry pieces are you going to find the logo so that you know that they are designer made jewelry. This was another set that I found at the jewelry store. And um, when um, the thrift store, I found this brooch and it was a huge big brooch really really nice motif and I thought that this was a coral I could have sworn up and down that this was a coral and when I looked at the backside I could not for the life of me find the logo 
Then I was looking, 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 and then I went to the earrings and I found the matching earrings. So when you go to these thrift stores, they don't always have the matching sets together. You sometimes have to find the sets yourself and sets always command a premium price versus um, a single brooch or single pair of earrings. And sometimes you can find the logo in the earrings and not in the brooch or on the necklace and not in the earrings, etc., etc. So when I saw these earrings, I thought for sure I was gonna find that coral logo and I did not. So these are not coral, although they look like coral, um, but they're still nice enough set that I purchased them anyway. The next item on my list that I found is this incredibly heavy bangle bracelet or cuff. Now, I don't know anything about this cuff. It's not marked anywhere. Um, and so I bought this because I knew it was ethnic and I love ethnic jewelry. It's a little bit hard to wear because it's made for a very, very thin wrist. I have a six and a half inch wrist, and so which is on the smaller side, it's not big, it's certainly not on the big side. It's either average to small. I think it might be Ethiopian or African. If anyone out there knows what this is, please let me know. It's really, really heavy, okay? It has a lot of weight to it. It's not the most comfortable. It's for a very, very small wristed person, but I just think, it's just stunning. Um, I recently did a video on the health benefits of carpet jewelry. I'll put the link um, in my description box for you guys to see. And so um, I would have totally put these in there. This is one shaped in a heart and this is one shaped in a crescent moon. I also have the matching earrings in the shape of a drop. This sort of has the look of Jackson Pollock. Jackson Pollock um, was an abstract painter. I believe he died, I wanna say in the 50s, mid 50s perhaps. I know that he lived out in East Hampton, Long Island from where I, I, uh, I lived in Long Island for quite some time. And, um, and he was a very, very famous a uh, painter and he showed his paintings in the Guggenheim and other museums in New York City. And so these enamel brooches and pieces were definitely from the 70s. You'll see a lot of copper jewelry and enamel work like this done in the 70s. Um, if you want to check out some other vintage copper jewelry that I collect, um, take a look at that video. This is a um, really cool piece, I think. A pair of Castle Cliff earrings done with a glass topaz. And I like to buy these because, um, first of all, they're very simple and easy to wear. And look at the crown, the way that crown is. This is definitely a 50s. I'm and always buying these beautiful crystal necklaces and I love to add the vintage matching uh, beaded earrings. And the earrings are hard to find. Um, so here's an example of one that I recently purchased. So these are from the 50s. And so I wish that this was a matching set because I ended up buying them the same day. Um, and look how pretty that is. These, um, this necklace is made with white milk glass stones with an iridescent coating to them. And um, the clasp has a beautiful three beads and it's probably glue set on there with these Aurora Borealis little tiny stones. I would say that these are probably from the 50s. And the nice thing about this necklace in particular is the length. A lot of the times you find these necklaces and they're like 16 inches and they kind of like choke you like this. And I have a short neck, so I don't particularly care for choking necklaces like this. This one comes out 18, I think 18 inches. They're getting harder and harder to find. And so if you see them, you should go ahead and grab them. 
And one of the last pieces I have to show you, I actually have one more, is this pocket watch, a locket. I love lockets because I do put pictures in them and little, little um, things. I put little hearts, little tiny uh, stuff that I find. This one came with a beautiful, long, 30 or 40 inch chain that I could double up easily like this, okay? Or, so you can either wear it like this, or I guess something like this one here and have it hanging from a simple this as an example. Um, but this is really, really beautiful because I love, love the length and you can definitely double it up. Um, this does not have a name brand. And the last but not least is this, what I call like a snake necklace. It uh, kind of has a little bit of an ethnic look to it with the matching earrings. Oh, I just think that it looks fabulous on. And I have several of these necklaces and you could make you know, all kinds of the, like sculptural, it's like they have a sculptural quality to them. Um, this one is a little bit more slinky. Uh, the other ones I have, when you mold them, um, they stay in the shape uh, of what you molded them to. I hope to be doing more of these videos. If th this is something that you enjoy watching, hit the subscribe button and leave me a comment. Give me some ideas and suggestions of, of jewelry you'd like me to do. Uh, and also uh, hit the notification bell so that you will know when um, my videos go up. So thank you so much for, for uh, watching this video and for being a part of my <laughs> obsession. Um, I love custom jewelry. I've loved it since I was a little girl. I've been collecting it for 40 years now. Um, I love the stories behind jewelry. I like the history. I like the the inspiration. I, I love it all. So if you do too, subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining me on this uh, journey that I'm taking. I appreciate it so much and I appreciate you. So, con mucho amor. Ciao.